Hello friends, today we are with Ryan Anglin. He is the CEO of Core Matters. Ryan worked for a Fortune 10 company in HR until he realized he is unemployable. Yeah. Like many entrepreneurs, he needs to go his own way. So he's founded Core Matters, a firm dedicated to helping businesses find and retain the right talent. Today, we are talking about the heartbeats inside of our companies, the people. Ryan is going to share with us how to find, attract, retain everything you need to know about bringing the right talent on board. Hi, I'm Emily LaRouche. Are you ready to make the journey from lawyer to entrepreneur? Every week I'm sitting down with people who have mastered the art of running a business and want to share with you the lessons they've learned along the way. Join me as we experience the highs, the lows, and everything in between as we learn, share, and grow together. Welcome to Share the Love. All right, Ryan, so when I have a job opening, I will go ahead and copy and paste an old job description and then spray and pray all over the job boards and hope for the best. What am I doing wrong? Well, I think the biggest mistake most business owners make is that they think it's about the job and it's really about the person. If you wanna find and track the best talent, your A players, you've really gotta focus on the person that you want on your team, not the job you wanna fill. Does that make sense? Okay. So kind of like finding a potential life mate, you want to find their characteristics? Absolutely. I mean, if you're in the dating market, you're going to have very specific criteria for the person that you want to date and potentially maybe someday marry. Okay. You, you need to look at recruiting people the same way. That's a nightmare. Dating is hard enough. <laughs> I haven't done it in a long time, but that's what I hear. Oh, wow. So we have to do this whole courting process over and over and over again. You got to make your business look attractive to potential applicants. Wow. Right now, the way the job market is with unemployment so low, so many people are interviewing employers more than the employers are interviewing the employees. Okay. So I've never viewed recruiting in that way. Certainly don't want to have to keep dating over and over again. That kind of sucks. But you say we should view it kind of like lead gen, like we put all this time into sales and attracting and how to bring in the right customers. And you're saying we should do the same thing when it comes to finding team members. Absolutely. The philosophy in attracting the right talent is the same philosophy you use when attracting the right leads. When you're looking to find new customers for your business, you actually say, this is the kind of person I'm looking for. You create what they call customer personas. We've probably all heard that in the marketing world. Um, you do the same thing when you're looking for an employee. What's that person look like? How do they behave? How do they think? Uh, when you're marketing for leads, you create a promise. It's okay. really easy. You're going to have the fastest car. You're going to look good in those jeans. You're, whatever that promise is. And then sales job is to validate that promise. So you know what? I can help you with that. But then operations has to fulfill that. We call that the customer experience. Mm -hmm. Creating that customer experience is what's going to attract the right kind of customers to your business. So think about it as an employee experience. When you create that right employee experience, you're going to attract the right kind of employees to your business. I can tell you a lot of my clients tell me that one of the biggest frustrations they have is people don't stick around. And when I ask them, did you deliver on the promise you made when you hired them? Most of the time they can't tell me that they did. So Do we even know what the promise is? I, if you asked me, what's the promise you make to your employees, I would probably say a paycheck. And it might be a paycheck. It might be training. It might be career development. It might be promotion opportunities. Even bonuses are promises that you make to an employee when you hire them. Okay. So how can we do a better job of articulating up front, here are the promises that we're making to you. When you come on board, this is what you can expect, and then we're going to deliver on that. I, you've probably heard it s said before that uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So have a plan in place. When you're actually recruiting somebody, don't make it a last minute ditch effort, which happens way too often. Too often, small businesses especially, they wait until they're just busting at the seams before they hire someone, and then the first person to say, I'll come work for them, they hire. Mm -hmm. But if you put a plan in place, and you know what that, the right person looks like, and you know what's going to attract them, and you know uh, what career path they want, like what they want out of the job, right. that's going to be the best way to make sure you deliver on it, is have that plan in place. Okay. And I can tell you one thing that we do on the first day of every new team member, we have, I buy a little gift box, and inside the box is their headset and all of the stuff they need. It's got our little book of core values, maybe a candle and a little journal. 
um, something to help kind of make them feel good. But going even before that, I mean, that's after they've been hired. What can I do before that to kind of articulate our promise and our brand and our um, philosophy on our values? Well, that's really big question, but I will tell you that the interview process is probably one of the most critical pieces of the hiring process that most small businesses just, they overlook. Uh, I met someone a couple of weeks ago and I asked them, how long is your average interview? And they, and they told me 30 to 45 minutes is how much time they spend with a new employee right, before they hire them. You don't even know somebody's, you know, you know nothing about right. them after <laughs> 45 minutes. Uh, think about it. If you went on a date with somebody after 45 minutes, would you marry them? Definitely not. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> But as business owners, we do this all the time because we're, we're desperate and we need to fill a position. Maybe we just lost an A player. We just brought, up, brought on a big new account that we can't handle. Mm -hmm. And so whoever just says yes, they'll, we'll take them. All right. So don't act like a desperate single. And one <laughs> other thing, one other thing I can tell you about that new employee onboarding, something to just give it that little extra is during the interview process, have them fill out what I call as a fuzzy file. I don't know if you've heard that term. Mm -mm. Basically, it's a, what do you like? Um, have them fill out a piece of paper. Um, what's their favorite place to go out to dinner? What's their favorite movie? And then do something specific to them okay. in that onboarding package. And it just makes it feel so much more personal. I love that. A fuzzy file. Fantastic. I don't think that there is a business owner or a manager on the planet who would argue for keeping C or D players. And I want to say consistently, every entrepreneur, manager I talk to, we all have the same problem. I just overheard somebody talking about it, like getting nails done. It's so hard to keep good people, but we keep bad people on the team all the time. And the first time I heard the words bench principle, I was like, oh, light bulb. <laughs> yeah. um, so could you share a little bit about what the bench principle is and how it, how it applies to business? Absolutely. So one of the things that we do with our clients is we help them create a system where they can reliably and predictably attract people to their business. You've probably heard that from the customer side, but we do it from the, the talent side. And these people are gonna be coming in all the time. And what I see a lot of small business owners do is say, we're not hiring right now. So they take all their job postings off the web, and if someone calls, they say, send us your resume, we'll call you if I we have I just did this, this is wrong? Oh man. <laughs> so if you want a bench, always be interviewing always be talking to people because you never know. I will tell you that I'm guilty of this, keeping a C player because I don't know how I'm gonna replace them. But imagine if every couple of weeks you had a new resume coming in and someone that wanted to work with you, how much easier it would be to let go of that person right. if you knew you could replace them that right. quickly. Well, and a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours is the one who kind of taught us about the bench principle. He says he interviews every Monday or whatever it may be. And so everyone on the team knows you can be replaced at any moment because I'm always recruiting. And I thought that was so intimidating. And I'm, you know, trying to run kind of a fluffy and nice organization. And I don't want to intimidate my team. Um, but at the same time, yep. we need those bench players. And it's a great side effect of always recruiting is a lot of times, especially in small businesses, people know that they're critical to the organization and they know that the business owners would struggle to replace them easily, so they get comfortable, they get complacent. Okay. If you're always recruiting, you're always talking to people, that complacency goes away real okay. fast. I love it. There are so many places to post jobs online and I told you that I like to spray and then pray. Yeah. So yeah. are the recruiting sites equal? Should we be putting them a little bit everywhere? Does it depend on the industry? Well, there's probably a million, before we started this, there's probably a million and five now uh, <laughs> recruiting websites out there. There are just so many. They're industry specific. They're behavioral specific. You know, if you're a hunter, there's probably a job site for hunters to go find jobs that are for hunters. Uh, I know that there are websites specifically for the legal industry. If you want to get a job in the legal industry, there are recruiting websites for that. Uh, but I think it's the wrong question that we're asking. I think if you ask the question of who is it that we want to work here, who is it that we want on our team, find out where they are and go there. So for example, back to the dating analogy, if you're single, you're not gonna go to a couple's retreat, you're gonna go where the singles are. Right. It's the same idea here. If you know that the kind of person you wanna hire is really outgoing, they're young, they're energetic, they're fun, where are they? Okay. Are they looking at job boards? Or are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? Where are they where you can get in front of them, even if they're not looking? 
And that's really one of the keys to creating a really predictable, reliable recruiting system is being in front of your target employees all the time, even if they're not looking. And do you find that social media is a player now when it comes to recruiting? I definitely think that it's a tool that we use uh, because just in any inbound marketing activity, you want to be in front of people over and over and over again so they get brand awareness. And social is a great way to do that. All right, so how many dates do we take a new candidate on before we make them the offer? Well, I will tell you, in my business, I mean, we're just a small agency, but in my business, every single employee goes through a minimum of eight hours of interviewing. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> but by the end of that eight hours, I know exactly what I'm getting. They know exactly what they're getting into. And at the end of those eight hours, if they say yes and I say yes, it's a good fit. And it's gonna be, it's gonna last a long time and we only hire A players. Now that doesn't mean that we keep them all because for, for my organization, one of the things I look for is someone that's always learning, someone that's always growing. And at some point in time, they're gonna outgrow me. Or maybe something comes up with their family. Maybe something comes up that's outside their control and they have to move on. So it's not to say that by doing this, you're gonna have people that stick with you forever, but you're gonna have the right people and you're gonna be glad for the period of time they're there with you. Awesome. But that eight hours of interview is really tough for a lot of people to get through. Well, not bad if you spend eight hours a day, every day for hopefully years. I mean, small investment of time overall. Well, what's interesting to me on that is a lot of business owners, especially when you're really small, you spend a lot of time planning for that week-long vacation. Doubling the hours for the week so you can get all the work done. You spend probably hundreds of hours getting ready for that one week of vacation to leave your business to the person you spent an hour getting to know. It just blows my mind. Well, when you put it that way, <laughs> we all need to invest in a better recruiting system then. So Ryan's offered all of us a 10-step process to create a reliable recruiting system. Click the link down below to get your free 10-step process. And if you are not a do-it-yourselfer and you're like me and just want to pass it off to Ryan, give him a call. He's offering a free 30-minute consulting session. This is not a sales pitch session. This is not where he tells you how great his services are. A real consulting session that will give you real practical things to walk away with and implement within your business. Ryan, I have some rapid fire questions for you. All Let's right. Let's do it. For fun, you like to? Oh, I love to play golf. All right. I thought you were going to say uh, shoot machine guns and fly upside down on flight simulators. <laughs> that was a lot of fun too, but that was not something I do a whole lot. So, yeah. Still on my <laughs> list. I'd like to have one of those machines in the house. That was so cool. Yes. I want to fly upside down at any time. Flight simulator in the living room would be great. Awesome. Okay. Best thing about being an entrepreneur? Oh, it's the freedom. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to report to anybody. I love that. What is one thing you want people to take away from today and implement right away in their business? Spend a little more time getting to know their employees before they, or I mean, even their current employees, but especially the ones that they're recruiting, getting to know them just a little bit better. Awesome. Yeah. Last question, what is your dream car? My dream car? Yes. Oh, it's a Bentley GT. Okay. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it turned on. <laughs> Congratulations, you're the proud owner of a Bentley. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. You can find Ryan online at LinkedIn or you can visit him at thecorematters.com. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Share the Love. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, share, and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Google Play to get the latest content.